Okay, so I think it's about time to start. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm glad to see so many people attending to this session since it's our first session in the morning and we had a big party last night. And thank you, everyone, to join this session. So I'm Shintaro Mizuno. I'm a senior research engineer from NTT Software Innovation Center, which is one of the R&D division within our uh, NTT group. And this is um, one of our engineers from our team, Takashi. Oh, thank you, Shintaro. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Takashi Natsume, and I also work for NTT Corporation. I am a software engineer. Okay. So um, our session is about our journey with OpenStack since we have started OpenStack project in 2011, four years ago. And we will um, show you what we did and what we are doing right now based on the um, lessons learned during the four years of our journey. Uh, so this is the outline of my presentation. Uh, first, we will um, introduce ourselves and entity group, what we're doing. And then we will um, dig into what we did in our early deployment, and then go to what we are doing right now in the current deployment, and what we uh, have gave back to the community and upstreaming activity, and our next steps. So uh, introduction. Um, as I think most of you in this room seems to be from Japan, and I think um, you may all know, but for those of you who are not familiar with the NTT group after the keynote and all the sessions, but uh, let me briefly introduce our group. So NTT group is a largest telco uh, in Japan, consists of uh, various um, subsidiaries providing so many um, telecommunication services, including regional communications and long distance internet service providers. We have um, systems integrations, mobile communications, and so many other uh, businesses. And as for the OpenStack, we have a um, variety of implementations in well, most of the major um, business companies, um, including NTT Communications, NTT Docomo, NTT Resonant, as you may see in the keynote, um, NTT Data, they provide um, system integration service, and NTT Smart Connect has been doing field trial. Um, NTT iCube, which is an R&D division in the US, is doing their R&D. And in this talk, I'm not going to talk about everything, but um, I'm going to focus on the earliest deployment, which was uh, our R&D cloud and public cloud um, configuration and architecture. So we will be focusing on those um, early deployments in this session. So for the rest of the use cases, you can watch the video from our other sessions from our group. And, and I think it's on the website of the summit already. So um, we're not only the user of OpenStack, but we have been uh, contributing to the community um, since the Bear Summit four years ago, I think. No, more than four years, maybe. So, um, since then, we have been contributing to the community, um, showing in, uh, as in the numbers here. Um, I think the numbers is not as compared to um, the largest um, de deployment, I mean, largest companies, but I think it's, the number is not so bad for a telco like us and as a user. Um, it's like top 20, I think we were in the top 20 of the contributing companies. And we had 60 more, um, 67 contributors uh, throughout uh, our journey, and we're proud of them. They did a good job in upstreaming. So, um, I will um, talk about why we had to upstream those um, patches and bugs and features uh, later in this session. So, okay, um, let's go deep in the details of what we have done um, in the behind the scenes. 
So again, uh, I will focus on our R&D cloud and a public cloud deployment um, in this session, which is a, the earliest, I mean, the latest, um, earliest deployment in our group. So, so this is the timeline of my, my talk. Um, as, I, as I said before, we joined the community back in 2010, I think, uh, from the bear. And the first use case would be uh, is um, our first deployment in using Fossum in back in 2012. I will talk about that first, and then we will talk about what we are doing in our current deployment, which is using Juno and Kilo. <coughs> so um, back in 2012, um, OpenStack was said to be production ready. There are several use cases that use OpenStack in production. And the hype of OpenStack has been rising so rapidly that everyone <laughs> thought OpenStack would be um, ready to use in production environment. But including us, people were still skeptic about its hype. Is it really production ready or is it really good? So um, we were on also the one who thought about that. But since it had quantum in Forsum, so that was the feature that we really wanted. So we decided to um, put our, our hands on Forsum and test what we can do with OpenStack. So despite the fun uh, features, um, we were still worried about its quality, so we focused in QA testing of OpenStack. So um, during this deployment, we did um, function, I mean, QA testing, including um, full API function test and non-API function test, which includes CLIs and other features, and full state transition test, like including all the resource state uh, transition, including network. And we did external system failure tests and API race condition tests and long-term stability test, as we usually do to other systems as well. And as I mentioned, we were really waited for the network features to get into the OpenStack, so we tested network as well. Um, at this time, um, we used um, Nisera uh, MVP, which is now uh, VMware NSX, as our neutron backend, since it was almost the only um, production in market at that time. So we tested um, using NSX, and we, we tested function, we did test, tested its capacity, performance, availability, um, similar to what we test on our uh, hardware switches. It's included like throughput from virtual machine to virtual machine, or virtual machine to external network via the router, how many tenants, I mean, how many network can we build, how many ports can we build, how many MAC addresses can it learn. And also the availability was so important. We had a uh, network node, how long would it take to switch over, and those kind of tests uh, were we done in that deployment. So um, after the testing, it took about a few months to test, more than a few months, I guess. And what we found was well, it had the features, but it has issues and weaknesses. Um, in the area like API race condition, it was so weak. Um, it lacked appropriate locking mechanisms so that if you like create port at the same time, the port becomes error very easily. And it also lacked the internal error handling. So if something happens during the API processing, well, resource goes error, and all you have, all you can do is delete it. And it also, it leaves the orphan resources like virtual interfaces and ports, and also instances that you cannot delete from OpenStack APIs. So you have to delete it manually. And state transition, uh, there were no work workflow management. And there were also no rollback mechanisms. So if something happens, you cannot roll back to the original state. 
like in migration, if something happens to migration, all, all you can do is delete the very virtual machine, which we didn't want to do. And API parameter validation, there are lacking parameter validation, so you can just enter um, flow parameter to break the system. And HA, um, HA was, wasn't so strong at the time. It took so many time to switch over to the standby node. So those are the weaknesses and issues that we found in Fosum. Well, it was the quality at uh, the time. So although um, we had good features in Fosum, we had quantum network, um, it was great. Um, we liked it. Um, but it turned out to be um, quite fragile um, for public clouds. You know, it's too fragile to put it in the wild for everyone to use. So um, our conclusion that back then was handle it with care. Okay. So what we do, and what we did in our some based system, I mean based because we change a lot. Um, we built a proprietary system on top of OpenStack or before the OpenStack um, so that we can be more gentle to OpenStack uh, from our users. So we had our proprietary system, uh, which consists of uh, resource management, um, host management, user management. We had our own database, which had all the resource information. Uh, we also had our, our own GUI, CLIs, and APIs. And we all, the important part, we had a uh, oh, oh, uh, workflow engine and transaction management uh, module, which controlled the OpenStack APIs. Like, um, similar to what Heat does uh, in, in the current OpenStack, and also like uh, Mistral. It's like Heat and Mistral combined. So we did it by ourselves. We also had so many patches in, in OpenStack as well. We, we even wrote a uh, single driver ourselves. So this is our, our first OpenStack system. Um, I know it's not pure OpenStack, and people shouldn't do it like this, but into, uh, in order to use uh, OpenStack in production back then, um, we had to build those kind of systems. But looking back, you know, OpenStack has heat and Mistral in, as a project. I think it was not a bad direction forward. But the bad idea was that we did it ourselves. So uh, what we added, we added a, a, as I mentioned, we did uh, GUI for end users to hide OpenStack resources and provide like business view of the uh, resources. And we did the GUI proprietary operational GUI that OpenStack didn't have, uh, host management, monitoring, resource and user management, and transaction management, as I said. Um, we also add a, a feature called Purge which is to roll back or roll forward or clean up uh, the API failure. So we add uh, features for OpenStack. We also had a uh, workflow engine execute a certain scenario, uh, consists of multiple OpenStack APIs, so like create network, create port, and create virtual machine, and, create, and attach them, and create a uh, virtual environment as a total, like Heat does. And we also had to strengthen parameter validation check before heading over to OpenStack. And we wrote our own EMC um, Cinder driver as well. So that was the technical part. And we also had to um, talk with the business people. Um, since they were also skeptic about OpenStack, um, the question we had to answer back then was, why should we use OpenStack? when we already have vCenter or uh, CloudStack running stable, right? But we liked OpenStack and we still saw the future, so we had to discuss with them and try to answer those questions. Um, there are some of the discussion points that we did. Um, we compared cost. Yes, it's open source. It should be cheap, all right? But, um, it didn't turn out well, because OpenStack is free to use, but it's not free to operate. It, you have to have engineers to uh, manage it. You have to have the support, commercial support behind that. 
So uh, cost comparison, yeah, it was good, but uh, I didn't just com uh, was the number one item to convince them. We also did a uh, feature comparison with a vCenter. We compared like what vCenter can do and what OpenStack can do. We created a list of the features and compared yes and no. And, but it was a bad idea. Um, it was totally different. Um, of course, it's different. Um, the concept of and the architecture was different, so it was no use. To, I mean, you shouldn't compare those, right? You have to stick with something you're gonna use. So it didn't work as well. Um, we also did a network feature comparison, um, and this one worked. Um, OpenStack uh, had an SDN solution. Uh, we used Nisaren SX, as I said, and it was you can create very flexible network uh, like you can do in the current um, environment. I mean, non-virtual environment. And we also saw, saw the ecosystem around OpenStack, uh, especially around Neutron. And we saw various um, SDN implementation that we can select and use. So um, they liked it also. They saw the future of OpenStack through the network feature. They, since we are the network operator, we had like a goal to combine existing network service with OpenStack, the data center and network together. Those kind of um, roadmap could be easily um, dri um, driven by OpenStack. So this one worked. So um, they were half convinced now. So um, the last thing was uh, its future growth. Um, its community power. Um, we look compared with like a cloud stack. It also had a community, but the power of moving forward in the OpenStack was much stronger. Even at that time, we thought that OpenStack could be the de facto of the open source um, software. So um, those are the items, and we had successfully uh, convinced the business people, and we had the goal to the OpenStack in production. So back to the technical um, items. Um, as I said, we patched OpenStack a lot, and that was our debt to um, pay. So um, let me hand over to Takashi to describe more about what we've done upstream um, to the community. Thank you, Shintaro. Uh, we developed about 150 patches. The patches could be classified to these categories. The largest number of bug fixes was for Nova Live Migration. As you know, Nova Live Migration function's quality was not good before. So we fixed many bugs. But Nova Conductor was introduced in Grizzly, and then the live migration function was modified significantly in the community code. And uh, we also added input parameter checks and improved log output. There were many patches, and we consider that it would take a lot of effort to do upstream them. So, we cooperated with Canonical and uh, did upstream with them with Canonical engineers. We have done upstream with Canonical for six months. Some patches were merged successfully in the community code. Some were rejected by the community and some were no need to upstream. The patches that were done upstream successfully were uh, adding tests, unit tests, uh, race condition bug fixes, deleting unnecessary things, unnecessary Nova console tokens, adding timeout parameter, for example, adding glance timeout parameter to Shinda. On the other hand, 
some patches were rejected. For example, multiplicity control function and input parameter check. Our multiplicity control function limited the number of concurrent operations. It was added because of avoiding performance decrement due to heavy operations. For example, creating a volume from glance images, uh, volume clones, volume clone, and so on. It could not be merged because there was similar function, uh, API rate limit, and some patches that improved input parameter check could not be merged because it should be added in next major API version. And then there were many bug bugs that had been fixed by other companies in the committee code and uh, had not been reproduced in master code, so the patches for them were not no need upstream. And uh, we tried to do upstream for not only bug fixes, but also our proprietary function. And we are working for log request ID mappings and task flow upstream in order to do upstream our transaction management and workflow engine function. One of our functions was tracking API, uh, uh, one of our functions was tracking API calls between components by using one common request ID. But in our upstream process, we changed using one common request ID to mapping each component request IDs. Uh, the spec for cross project has been approved. Uh, currently, we are implementing the function getting request ID from HTTP response header and will implement log function to output, output request IDs with in one line. In the committee, task flow implementation, implementation is work in progress. Task flow is needed for our retry rollback and API trace function. So we also take part in task flow implementation. We have a lot of things to do. Uh, they are force delete in ro rollback uh, optimization for error handling. As Shintaro said, we developed the drivers for EMC storage product by ourselves, but we did not do upstream for them and uh, decided to use EMC drivers in the community code in our current system. What we learn, learned from the first release is that upstream first is very important. The work of the development and the fix is in vain because they have already been fixed by other companies uh, in the community code. Our proprietary function and the tools have to be modified because prerequisite function cannot be merged. And uh, it takes a long time to do upstream for our proprietary function since it needs coordination and persuasion as the community. And we are working for them now. Then Shintaro will talk about our current system. OK, thank you, Takashi. So in short, we, ha we still have our debt, and we are, have to pay uh, as well. And, but our first system is running very well. It's running more than two years in our lab and one of our business companies, and no major issue. So Fawesome was good if you handle it with care. Okay, so It's running in production. But we, had a, uh, we learned a lot from the first deployment. 
So um, the next deployment, our current deployment. So based on the lessons learned, um, we have undertook uh, the next deployment using Juno and Kilo. So um, how we do it now? So first we had to change our mindset. Don't be greedy. Find a way to live with the open uh, community code, which means don't change OpenStack and try to use it what you can get. So um, how we do it? Um, this is our basic um, strategy or workflow uh, of our thought, I mean, how we do it. For the features, first try to satisfy with what you have with OpenStack or try to figure out with what you can get, meaning don't change the code. Okay. And if you want something to be added to OpenStack, try to use write a spec or uh, request for uh, enhancement to realize your ideas. So don't write your own code internally. It will take time, but, um, but someone would uh, help you, I guess. And if that doesn't work, and if you really, really want it, um, and if you can afford it, since you have to op uh, manage it yourself, then think of building um, outside of OpenStack and don't touch the upstream code. So this is how we do it now for the features we want. And for the bugs, um, first report the bug to the community as fast as possible and wait to be fixed as a user. And if you need it quick, then pick up the bug yourself and fix it. And sometimes the community won't fix it or the priority would be low. Or sometimes they say, well, it's not a bug, it's a spec. And when that happens, try to live, it, live with it right? by writing a document. We write a lot of documents. We write workarounds, recovery manuals for operators when we hit those bugs or work around to of the, those bugs. We also wrote um, FAQs for the users, known issues, so that we can wait to be fixed and work around those bugs. But sometimes the bug will be critical for the system. And what we do currently is we just close the API. Don't touch it, it's too dangerous. Okay. So we, currently we don't expose all the APIs. Some APIs are not even implemented. So we only expose a few of the um, subset of the APIs. And if all the above doesn't work, well, cr create enhanced patches if you really need it. But try to keep it minimum and try to upstream. Okay. So we keep only a few in-house patches right now, not 150 that we need to upstream. So um, based on those um, ideas and strategies, um, this is how we, what we did and what we didn't do in the, our current deployment. Um, we dropped everything that needed to change OpenStack specs, like features that would change the API behavior or f uh, requirements that like, do, do like open, uh, Cloud Stack or vCenter do thing requirements. Okay. Instead, we create workarounds or leverage um, equivalent OpenStack features to mandate those um, requirements. But there are things that we needed to do, mandatory things, and for operation. And we did a few of them without changing OpenStack. First, we'd add API filter to hide immature APIs, as I said, <coughs> using Apache proxy in front of the OpenStack APIs. We add um, notification API log collection tool. It is an external um, tool, simple tool, to collect um, necessary information to operate and for mainly for the billing purpose. And we also uh, created a cascaded domain model by using Keystone APIs. 
Um, this is done uh, by our, our document uh, manual. So we created a cascaded domain model within the Keystone. And we also developed um, high availability for virtual machines. Um, it is open source, but is it external um, tool or system that we created to recover the virtual machine when something happens? This is um, what we needed for the public clouds, since we, our virtual machines are pets instead of cattle. So this is the overall system um, view architecture. As I mentioned, we, had, we have a reverse proxy in front of OpenStack API to filter the APIs, one for the user and one for the operators. We also, we also have the, some operational tools, um, Virtual Machine HA, which is called Masakari, and it has been presented in the demo session um, Tuesday, so if you missed it, please check the video. It's, it's online, I think. And the notification API log collection tool collects the API log from the Apache and receives the notification from OpenStack, which is OpenStack uh, standard. We add some agent in the compute node to report the error event to the, the um, Masakari. But we didn't touch OpenStack at all. We used APIs. We had a few agents, but it runs outside of OpenStack. So but, um, since we didn't touch OpenStack, it is possible to upgrade if the API is consistent. The Fawesome version, we gave up upgrading. So this is our new um, um, architecture right now. So um, let me pass uh, over to Takashi to dig more deeply in what we have configured for OpenStack. Thank you, Shintaro. This figure represents our current OpenStack configuration. There are controller nodes, storage nodes, Compute nodes, network nodes, and backend nodes. The controller process, Nova API, Shinda API, and so on, run in the controller node, nodes. And they are configured with active active. Uh, but Neutron server and Nova console nodes are configured with active passive by using pacemaker. Uh, glass processes in the stray nodes are configured with active active. Cinder volumes are configured multiple active nodes and one passive node. MySQL and RabbitMQ run on the back end nodes. MySQL are configured with three active and RabbitMQ are configured with two active. The network nodes are configured with multiple active nodes and one passive node. About computer nodes, uh, computer nodes, as Shintaro mentioned, um, they are configured HA by using open source tools we developed. Our current system architecture is based on Ubuntu 14.04 and stable kilo. We configure six type host aggregates for VM scheduling, three OS types and two Nova flavor types. Three OS types are for Windows, Red Hat, Red Hat, uh, other operating systems. Two Nova flavor types are for normal and that have much memory. And our architecture supports uh, multiple data center, uh, multiple, da multiple data centers. And uh, we contributed to the committee during current system development cycle. 
in Cinda, we implemented the function that prevents users from uploading a volume that have protected properties. In Glance, uh, we implemented the function that prevents users from downloading an image that have protected properties. Uh, these, these functions are for licensed images. For example, uh, Microsoft Windows. And we enabled grants to use multiple file system stores as backend. And uh, we proposed the function reloading configuration file by sending hang up signals to, to the community. And uh, the reloading function has been implemented in the community. In Neutron, we enabled an M3 agent or a DHCP agent to start without selectable for auto scheduling, but manual scheduling available. And we let uh, Neutron not to stop all services on a DHCP and L3 agent when turning administrator up of them to false. Then, Sintaro will wrap up our presentation. Thank you, Takashi. Um, so um, that was uh, our second deployment, uh, current deployment. We are now aligned with the community. We can use community code as is, and we can move forward with the community. So um, from the lessons learned, we, the, uh, the mo system model that we presented today was for the public cloud. So I believe that OpenStack best fits um, in a cattle model, which is like a web services, you can spawn out the VM, you can kill the VM anytime. And it, it, in those cases, the, the entrance barrier will be lower. But for the public cloud, you have to care more about the virtual machine. So you have to treat your virtual machine as a pet, precious pets, because customers' virtual machine, you get money f with it. So, so that was the hard part of OpenStack using as a public cloud. And there are discussions about uh, where to implement OpenStack. And we, at this moment, uh, at least, we are not still um, confident about using OpenStack in like a core network feature virtualization or, or silo application virtualization, because they may not need OpenStack, or maybe OpenStack is still requires some more features or enhancements. But we are looking on those as well. The, but they will be much more difficult. So um, for our next steps, um, the focus areas, um, we are focusing on more upper level uh, applications like PARS or IoT um, use of OpenStack. And also the practical use of OpenStack in the NFE area as well. And we are not now trying to upstream um, the following functions to um, the major um, project, like Nova, we try to improve on shell performance, it is blueprint. Uh, Neutron, availability zone support, it is almost merged uh, to Mitaka, but it, it it's a blueprint and there are codes. Uh, we are working on Congress um, to use uh, in OPNFV use cases like Doctor. And the big um, task we have to do is a cross project, which is a log request ID mapping so that you can track the log using the um, request ID. And for Masakari that we develop, we try to upstream. So it's open source, but it's not an one of the open stacks. So, so we're trying to upstream if we can have support from the community. So um, this is about it for our presentation. Uh, we have some more presentation this afternoon. They are both interesting. You can learn a lot from them as well. And if you miss any of the NTT Group presentations, please check the video. Um, they're online. Okay. So um, we are now open for questions. How much time do we have left? Not sure. So if you have questions, come up in the front because they want to um, record it. Oh, uh, by the way, if you want to know what that means, Masakari no o nageru, please check the video from the demo session.
you will figure it out. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, I got the impression from uh, one of the slides, okay. it may be correct or not, that you prefer to develop yourself than to finding an, or implementing or buying third party tools. And there are of course a lot of those and a lot of open source available. So uh, can you speak a little bit more about that? Which do you think is better taking something that exists like a simple thing like Puppet or, or Chef and, and use it or implement mm -hmm. your own function and, and run with it? Which do you think is better? Okay. Um, we believe using the existing open source tools is the better way, best way, that if we can do it. We, all, yeah, we, we use Chef, any open source tools as much as possible, but there are some areas that um, existing tool doesn't apply to our requirements. And only in those cases we de develop ourselves. But most of the cases we use um, existing tools. Like in the log collection tool, we use FluentD uh, to collect logs. So we um, use OpenStack, I mean open source as much as possible. Okay. How, many how much time do we have left? One more question? Any? Okay. Thank you. I'd like to know uh, what's the borderline between the situation where you donate your program to the community and the uh, situation where you decide not to donate to the community. Uh, you mentioned that the, if you donate, it takes a long time. But the, again, there have to be some uh, borderlines. <laughs> yes, um, it is difficult. You know, um, you try to upstream everything. You try to write a spec, you try to blueprint, and up write a code. But sometimes it takes a long time. But in those cases, what you can do is wait to be implemented until then you like uh, don't provide those services and wait. And if you really want it, like Masakari that we developed, we develop ourselves. Right? So decision would be, is it mandatory for you to operate or provide service to the customer? If it's not mandatory, then wait. If it's mandatory, you, you can if it's a critical thing, then try to build it, but try to be minimum. So that is our strategy. Okay. So I okay, okay. <laughs> Come on. So you are the innovation center yeah. for entity. Uh, but entity has all these components, entity, data entity, mm -hmm. resonate, right. and there's multiple different workloads that you ultimately plan, plan on running. Yeah. So what is your experience across these workloads? Have you actually okay. started running any example work, production workload, or is it just as dev? Okay. Um, currently, uh, we don't have like a unified um, infrastructure throughout the group company. We have different deployments in different companies. So uh, the talk, the architecture we talked today is for the public cloud, and other companies have like a private cloud using OpenStack. They have their different architecture, much more simple, I think. So um, it is better to have the unified infrastructure, but at this moment, we have not figured out how to do that at this moment, but yeah. Thank you. So I think we have run out of time. We will be.